Still working with the eagle's image, um, let's go ahead and look at this little icon right here in the layers panel, which says create new fill or adjustment layer. Um, and let's see what this does. So I'm basically going to go ahead and click on that and then choose one of these options. Okay, for example, brightness and contrast. Okay, so what you see is a new layer being added and it says brightness and contrast. Um, and the brightness and contrast panel opened and I can obviously uh, change the contrast and the brightness. Okay. Um, and then I can go ahead and click on that same icon again the create new fill or adjustment layer. Uh, this time I can do something else like vibrance. Uh, and then the vibrance panel opens. A new layer is created called vibrance. Um, I can add vibrance, which basically adds, you know, cl uh, color, nice color, and some saturation. Always pay attention uh, when you're adding saturation because if you add too much, it looks artificial. So look at the trees; they they don't look la natural anymore. Um, and so forth. Let's add something else, that, like um, gradient. Um, and this is actually giving me a gradient from black to white, which I can change the angle I can change, the direction of the gradient, um, and so forth, and say OK, and so forth. So what's happening basically is um, every time I make a new effect using the create a new fill or adjustment layer, that effect is added on a new layer, uh, and it doesn't affect my real image. So that's really, really powerful. Let me try to turn off some of these um, uh, effect. So if I uh, check on this eye icon, click on that, it hides the gradient. If I click on vibrance, it hides the vibrance. If I click on brightness and contrast, it hides that as well. And then we see underneath the, my, our original layers where our uh, initial work is uh, unaffected. So the great thing about this is we can make all the changes that we want, not physically on the image itself, not physically on the image of the lake or the image of the eagle, but on separate independent layers. And if one day we happen to not like that effect anymore, we can just turn it off or uh, just delete it. So I can, for example, select this layer and drag it down to the trash if that's not the effect I want. So just uh, remember this uh, very powerful tool where you can make changes uh, to your image without affecting the image itself um, since the effects happen on new layers which you can hide or throw. Okay, uh, another thing, let's go ahead now and uh, click on our layer one which is the lake. Actually, let me go ahead and call it lake. Um, and I want to duplicate this layer and um, I want to call it lake effect because I don't want to affect my original lake uh, image in the background. So I want to make changes to this lake effect image. Let's go under filter. Let's check some of these uh, galleries. So you see you have so many options. Uh, you can go ahead and check them uh, on your own. Uh, try things out, you know, see what they do. Uh, for now, let's click on filter gallery, which shows us um, artistic, brush strokes, distort, sketch, stylize, text, texture. And under each of these sections, we have so many options of uh, styles. So for example, this current one is rough pastels. Probably it opened to it because I work with this effect a lot. Um, you can choose cut out, which gives you this uh, graphic effect, colored pencil, film grain, you know, it adds grains. Um, plastic wrap, you know, this looks a bit odd, you know, obviously it depends on what you're doing. Poster edges, a sponge, a sponge effect, underpainting. So, um, rough pastels, I always come back to it. Um, and it really looks like somebody used, um, you know, uh, pastel coloring pa uh, pencils and then uh, colored on, you know, thick a paper um, to get this effect so it, it's beautiful and you can control you know uh, the stroke length the detail uh, the canvas so how, how would you like your canvas do you want bricks instead you know the brick effect um, 
Do you want um, the effect to be from the bottom or from the left and so forth? Um, how much stroke length do you want? So you can drag the slider up or down. Um, and so forth. So this is where you uh, make your changes depending on uh, which um, you know uh, which option you chose from the the panel. So we are under the artistic panel. We chose rough pastels, and then we made our changes on the right side, and then we can hit OK, and then it applies uh, that change on our image. Now, obviously. Um, I mean, this is just to cover where the filter gallery is and all the different options. But if we look at this whole image with the eagle, it's not working very well anymore because the background is, um, you know, um, it, it looks like hand colored uh, with pastel coloring, while the eagle looks like a real image. So together, the blend uh, seems a bit odd. But um, now you know where the filter gallery is and um, you can go back there and uh, you know see what the others uh, do so let's open brush strokes for example dark strokes so it's all nice effects uh, presets if you will that exist sketch this is going to make it black and white um, stylize so obviously not all of them it depends on uh, stained glass grain and so forth so you have to you know play around with these and see what you like uh, some effects you know i hardly ever use um, because you know they have certain purposes that don't work with mine but you know where to find this now and then uh, go ahead and and see what they do